Hey guys, it's Krista Watson from Krista Quilts, and I have a special bonus as my free gift to you. You can download this free pattern behind me. It's called Puzzle Box, and you can get it at kristaquilts.com slash free pattern. It's made from two strip pies of my brand new Good Vibes fabric from Bettertex. I love piecing and quilting and binding in every single step of the process. Heck, I love designing the fabrics that go into them, and I love teaching others my fun and carefree methods. Once you embrace perfectly imperfect quilting like me, you'll get more quilts done and you'll have fun doing it. Let me tell you a little bit more about how I made my puzzle box quilt. When sewing the blocks together, I decided to use the wrong side of the low volume fabrics to create more contrast with the saturated prints. The low volume prints in this line now do double duty because you can use the front or back depending on your preference. I quilted Puzzle Box using an organic wavy line design, one of my favorites. I combined the dual feed with the 20D foot to create these fun wavy lines. You can also do the same thing using the walking foot. Take a look and see this in action. To tackle the quilting on this quilt, I start off on the right hand side of the quilt and I'm quilting an organic wavy line by moving the quilt back and forth while the machine itself is stitching straight. Each of these blocks is about 8 inches wide, so my first set of quilting lines will be about 8 inches apart. I call this method divide and conquer, and I'm going to do one complete pass across the quilt in or near the ditch to create this wavy line design. I like to set up my sewing machine the same way whenever I'm doing any walking foot style quilting, which I'm actually performing using my Bernina dual feed and the 20D foot. I like to increase my stitch length to 3.0 because that helps take care of friction and drag on the quilt that has a tendency to shrink up those stitches. I've also reduced my presser foot pressure all the way down to zero because this really helps prevent any puckers or tucks when I'm doing this sort of straight line or even wavy line quilting. The other thing I do is I have engaged the hover feature. It's hard to see, but whenever I stop quilting, that foot is just gonna pop up a tiny little bit, allowing me to move the quilt as needed. Notice how often I stop and reposition my hands. Once I feel like I'm starting to reach, I make sure that I stop with the needle in the down position and reposition and shift for a more comfortable angle on the quilt. I can only stitch for a few inches at a time before it's time to readjust. You can see my hand movements and the stitching pattern a little bit better in this close-up video. Notice that I'm taking my second pass across the quilt and now my stitching lines are about four inches apart. It's hard to notice any of the quilting right now on the busy prints, but what I'm aiming for is texture. It's going to take a couple more passes across the quilt before you'll start to notice anything. These first few set of lines are what I call anchor quilting. They're going to hold the quilt together so it doesn't shift and you can fill in more quilting in between each of the anchor lines. The thread I'm using for machine quilting is my favorite, Orafil 58 100% cotton from my Piece and Quilt collection. For my third pass across the quilt, my lines are now about two inches apart and it's slowly but surely starting to add some texture. Notice how I'm stitching. I'm stitching each line in one direction from top to bottom, rather than turning the quilt each time. This helps keep all of the fabric and batting going in the same direction and it prevents whiskering, which is little tiny tucks in between the stitching. When you can take all these little tips and tricks together, it helps you have a really nicely quilted quilt in the end. As I'm stitching, I focus on gentle waves and I don't worry about going too far to one side or too far to the other. I just enjoy the process. 
Here's a speedy version showing how I start and end each line of stitching. I stitch at the top of the quilt in the batting and I stitch all the way to the end, cut thread, yank the quilt through the machine again and continue. I do this for each and every line that I'm stitching. When I begin quilting, I'm starting from the right and working my way towards the left and center. When I reach the center of the quilt, I will clip off the thread ends, rotate the quilt under the machine, and continue in the center position, moving to the right this time. This allows me to control the bulk of the quilt and it makes it much easier to stitch, one light at a time from top to bottom. This is my fourth pass across the quilt and now you can see the lines are approximately one inch apart. I haven't had to mark any of the lines of quilting. I use the seam lines as a guide to divide and conquer and split up the process. First the lines were eight inches apart, then four inches apart, then two inches apart, and now one inch apart. And you can continue quilting until you like the density of the stitching. Now I'll speed things up a little. Too bad I can't quilt this fast in real life. For my fifth and final pass across the quilt, my lines are now approximately half an inch apart. But when you look closely, they're not all exactly the same distance and I'm not really worried about that. I'm not lining up any of the humps or bumps. Again, I'm going for a more organic look. So far, none of my lines have touched and they're roughly equally spaced apart. If you'd like to do another round after this, you can cross over some of the lines, quilt some of them more densely, and you can continue going until you like how dense it is. The choice is up to you and there's no right or wrong answer. For this final pass across the quilt, notice that I'm continuing to work my way across the quilt from right to left. In other words, as I'm stitching the lines in between, I have worked from the right moving towards the center. Once I reach the center, I'll rotate it and you'll notice in the next segment that I will be working from the center to the other side of the quilt. I'm still working on the fifth and final pass of stitching across the quilt. If you look closely, all of the lines towards my left have now been stitched and I'm working on filling in the gaps towards my right. I have rotated the quilt so that I'm only working on half of the quilt at any one time. It controls the bulk and makes the whole process much more manageable. By the time I've stitched this many lines, you don't see any of the imperfections or the individual stitches. All you see is this yummy quilting texture. Again, I'm using the same process for each line of stitching. I start at the very top of the quilt and stitch a line all the way through the end. When my bobbin starts to get low, I simply put in a fresh bobbin and keep stitching additional lines until I'm finished. And there you have it, yummy, beautiful, organic texture, wavy line designs that can be done with the Bernina Dual Feed or Walking Foot. So head on over to kristaquilts.com slash free pattern to pick up your copy of this free quilt pattern today. And while you're at it, be sure to grab a couple of the Good Vibes strip rolls so you can make this fun quilt in a hurry.